Boys and girls, welcome back to another video. Today's subject is how to shampoo a floor mat. It's very basic. There's thousands of videos, but what I want to address is a few particular points that I've taken from my professional world of professional auto detailing. So, the operating procedure is this. You always pre-vacuum. You apply your choice in an upholstery shampoo. You agitate it manually. You mop it up. It's not the only way, but it's a very simple way rather than busting out a carpet extractor. So you'd be surprised at how far, regardless of how dirty your floor mats are, how far you can get with a very basic setup like this. So one of the things, the tricks that I will add that a lot of guys do not understand is how important pre-vacuuming is. So I could simply attack this floor mat with my shampoo and I could have very good results. But do not underestimate how critical or how effective it is to break loose the dry debris first. And then you have two choices. You either vacuum it up with a vacuum. And my go-to vacuum that you'll see on endless YouTube channels now is the rigid four gallon, four horsepower rolling vacuum cleaner. But you also have another alternative, which is compressed air or electric air. Now I know electric air doesn't even make sense. What I mean by that is electricity delivered to a form of a blower. My go-to blower is a leaf blower. It's gotta be the winning balance between big enough, strong enough, but not too big where I can't actually operate it and use it in a safe manner. So the bigger one is for the exterior use. The smaller one is when I have to bust it into the inside of a car interior and break loose some debris that maybe my nozzle tool, my vacuum cleaner cannot get to. So you have different options. But what I want to stress is how important that pre-vacuuming is. Because once you introduce liquid into the equation of dirt, guess what it essentially makes at a rudimentary level? A type of mud, muddy mess. So yes, I can mop it up with this but I'd prefer because it's quicker and easier to get it while it's dry. So, and by the way, this floor and mat for most of the world would not be considered that dirty. Here in California, because we don't get much weather, we get a little bit of rain, but mostly we live in chronic drought mode. So the dirt that we get is mostly just dry dirt and oils that we track in from the street into our cars. That's what this is, but regardless, you will get a lot of headway by breaking it up with a brush and pre-vacuuming it. So that's what I'm gonna start with. Now I know just in that simple step that there'd be many people that would find that acceptable result and you would just have eliminated additional steps and additional products and additional tools to your world. And you could keep it that simple. But that's not acceptable to me, most professional detailers. Also what you might note is that I have an underlayment down. Often, and I've been guilty of this myself, way back in the day. So now what I do is I carry around a mat that I put down onto the ground first so that my floor mats, whether it's my own floor mats for my car or floor mats of a customer's car, is not sitting on the dirty um, ground. Because Johnny customer is gonna walk out, they're gonna see you shampooing the floor mat on the dirty ground. I guarantee I know it's gonna go through their head. They're gonna be like, wow, are you kidding? And now you're gonna take that floor mat off the dirty ground and put it back into my car? How does that make sense, Darren? It doesn't. But they're not necessarily gonna to wanna to tell you that. They're just gonna, that is gonna be an unspoken rule and you're gonna just suffer the consequences and the consequences might be that they don't call you back for a second visit. We want them to call you back for a second visit. Therefore, take a little precaution, show some additional level of professionalism, communication, 7% verbal. 93% is nonverbal. What they see you do, how you talk, how you walk, how you act, how you perform, how you dress, everything else, nonverbal communication. This is a form of nonverbal communication, which is, hey, Mr. Customer, 
I'm that attentive to details and I want to make sure that I don't drag some dirt from the ground into your car. So that's my little added trick also. At this point, I'm going to apply my all-purpose cleaner. Notice it's not in a dedicated bottle that says upholstery cleaner, upholstery shampoo. Why? Because you don't have to overthink it. You can, in fact, use an all-purpose cleaner. My go-to currently is from Simple Green. They like to keep it simple. I like to keep it simple. Economically friendly because it's a concentrate. I can custom blend it to suit my needs. I dilute mine down 10 to 1 when I'm dealing with upholsteries, whether it's the uh, seating, the floor mats, pretty much anything in the interior, I'm going to use this dilution ratio. That means one part of concentrate and you add 10 equal parts of water. Light applications are always better repeated than one excessively oversaturation, thinking you're going to get it in one go, because chances are you're just not. I've brushed it aggressively. I'm using a nylon brush that's not too stiff as to cause damage, but it's not too soft that it's going to prove ineffective. So you find that winning balance. A good way, like carpeting, it's almost irrelevant. It would be hard to truly damage this with a brush. But let's say you're shampooing leather. That's where it gets a little tricky for a lot of you guys, despite how durable leather really is. So you can test it on your own skin. In my rule, as long as I'm not drawing blood, I'm good to go. Now, with that said, is it's looking pretty good. I'm showing some discoloration here. I don't know if that's a result of it still being dirty. Let me pull it into the camera's view, and I don't know what's going to pick up. Just in my eye, in the real world, uh, lighting is such a big variable. So I'm noticing that there's still some dirt along this piping. The question becomes, is that dirt or is the piping being worn off? Because often when materials, like this is a semi-smooth material versus the fibrous materials here, that when the finish has been worn off, when you get it wet, it will tend to darken up. But as it dries, it lightens back up. So if I'm working with a solution of liquid called cleaner, it's gonna naturally become darker. So it's tough sometimes to know if that's actually dirt or if it's material that's been worn off and it's just darkening up because of the liquid. So that's where you have to go in and experiment and test. Pulling up some more dirt. I'm analyzing it very tightly. It looks like that there's some areas that are subtly worn off, but it looks like the majority of that was in fact dirt. And there's some stitching along here. And then you've got this metal embellishment here that says Mercedes Benz. So this is where it really is about the details and you have to dissect everything on a case by case moment. But to repeat, literally and figuratively, Better to repeat with light applications rather than one heavily saturation, thinking you're going to get it with one go. Come back in, mop it up. I always use a microfiber cloth for two reasons. One, highly absorbent. Secondly, it doesn't leave any lint. You use a cotton terry cloth towel, it's going to be less absorbent and you're gonna leave some lint that you're gonna to have to come back in and clean it after the fact or vacuum it up. I wanna reduce my steps, not increase my steps. So, microfiber cloth. And my rule, as this gets heavily or more and more soiled up, I just rotate the cloth. When I have finished results or desired results, I then mop this in one direction. Now, based on you and your judgment call in the moment, you may decide to mop it in one direction or maybe go in a separate direction. It will change according to how the nap is laying down. It will change appearance. In this case and in this car, I prefer this way. It creates a lighter appearance for the color of this interior, which is a light tan. 
I prefer this. This floor mat came out virtually spotless, so that's good. And now I just have a completely clean floor mat that is also now completely uniform in appearance. To me, that's a step up in professionalism. But that's just me. You do what works in your world. With that said, we will see you on the next video.